So before we begin hyperbolas, let's just kind of do a little bit of a review. Um, you haven't ever seen these things all mixed together on the same page. So here are four examples of conic sections that obviously are not um, complete. They need to have this, the complete the square done. But let's just see if we can identify what they are. So in this first one, I see that I only have one squared term. So that is obviously a parabola. All right, in this second one, if I were to add the 3x over here with the y and add the 6y over, I would have 5y squared plus 3x squared. Okay, that means I definitely am not a parabola, and because the coefficients are different on the squared terms, this is going to be an ellipse. In this third example, I see that the coefficients of my squared terms are the same. So if I completed the square, the constant over here that I would have would end up being, if I divided through, would end up knocking out that to the same denominator. So when my leading coefficients of my squared terms are the same, this is going to be a circle. Now this third one, if I bring this over, I'm going to subtract an x squared. And all we've talked about are when we have, um, like up here, when we have a y, a y squared, and this is going to be plus an x squared, or vice versa. We haven't talked about when we're going to have a y squared subtract an x squared. This is the example of what a hyperbola would look like. Okay, so let's talk about the definition of a hyperbola. A hyperbola is the set of all points P such that the difference of the distances between P and two fixed points, again called foci, is a constant. So what are some of the things here? The line through the foci, foci intersects the hyperbola at the two vertices. So if I draw a line from foci to foci, I intersect the two ver at the two vertices. The distance from the vertex so from one vertex to another vertex is called the transverse axis, and the midpoint is the center. I'm just going to move to the other one just so I don't draw as much on that first picture. So I have a, each hyperbola has two branches. This is called a branch and this is called a branch. Okay, the 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 graph part are called branches. And um, the last thing is it has two asymptotes. that contains the diagonals of a rectangle. You can see the rectangle in here. Okay, it's centered around the center of the hyperbola. The last thing I want you to notice are the equations. X squared has always been first in circles, parabolas, doesn't matter because there's only one term, and ellipses. Notice in these that in this left one, x squared is listed first, and in this right one, y squared is listed first. And when we're subtracting, it definitely does make a difference. So I want you to notice where the branches are. When I am a y squared, my branches are opening on the y-axis. Okay, their vertex, they're opening up and down. On the left here with the x squared, my branches are opening left and right like the x-axis, so it's opening along the x-axis. Okay, so let's graph a hyperbola. And the first thing I will notice is that my center is at negative 2, negative 3. Even though the y squared is listed first, make sure you grab the x squared, uh, the x from the h and k first. 
So negative 2, negative 3. And I have no idea why this line turned out to be black with blue outline, but we're going to go with it. Okay, the next thing I need to make sure is that I look and I see that the y squared term is listed first, which means my, my hyperbola branches are going to open up and down. Sorry about that, Bell. So they're going to open up and down. So same thing. A is 16. Notice that in the hyperbola, the A squared isn't necessarily bigger than the B squared. The A squared is always the first letter listed. Again, it doesn't matter what A is. I'm just going to take 16, and since I'm under the Y, I'm going to go up 4. I'm going to go down 4. And then under the X, I have 25, so I'm going to go to the right 5 and to the left 5. Okay, now out of these four points, my vertices, I'm going to create the rectangle. I'm now, from corner through center to the other corner, going to put in my asymptotes. There's one asymptote. Sorry, that one's pretty bad. There's the other asymptote. Okay, now I'm going to fill in my branches, and my branches are just like we've done before. They're going to come right up along the asymptotes. and that would be my hyperbola. So the vertices are the vertices of the branches. So this would be negative 2, 1, and negative 2, negative 7. Negative 2, 1, and negative 2, negative 7. The transverse axis, the length of it, is the length from vertex to vertex through the center. So that's going to be 8. And the conjugate is just the opposite one, which is going to be 10. Okay? The transverse does not necessarily have to be the longest. Okay, now the equations of the asymptotes. And I'm going to put them in point slope form. And the point I'm going to use for both, since both asymptotes go through the center, I'm going to use the center. So I'm going to do y minus the y equals the slope. Well, the slope is rise 4, run 5, or rise 4, run backwards 5. So it's plus or minus Eek. Okay, just lost me. Okay, I tried to fix that plus or minus, it's just not, there we go. Plus or minus 4 over 5, because my slope is either plus 4 over 5 or minus 4 over 5. x minus the x. And that would be the equation of both asymptotes. Now, foci here are found by the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared equals 16 plus 25, which would be 41. So c equals plus or minus the square root of 41, which is approximately 6.4. So again, the foci are the distance from the center towards the vertices. So remember, I'm not going from the vertex out. I'm going from the center out. So I'm going about 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 point four. There's one foci. And I'm going from the center down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 point four. There's another foci. And again, just like we were doing on ellipses, the, the um, coordinates of those will be negative 2 is the x. And I'm starting at negative 3 
and then I'm adding or subtracting the square root of 41. Those would be the ordered pairs of my foci. So let's complete the square of a hyperbola. I'm going to add the x squared to the left, and I'm going to subtract the 18x to the left. I'm going to keep the negative y squared on the, the left, and I'm going to keep the 12y, but then I'm going to add the 19 to the right. And I'm going to complete the x portion by adding 9 to, squared, which would be 81, to both sides of my equation to keep them balanced. And that would give me x minus 9 quantity squared. On this particular portion of the y, I'm actually going to factor out a negative before I complete the square. So I'm going to add a 36 in here, 6 squared, but I'm actually subtracting 36 to the right side of the equation. And that will give me a 64 over here. So my final complete the square equation is this. But we know that um, hyperbolas need to be set equal to 1 as well, so I'm going to divide everything by 64. And you'll say, well, Mrs. Irwin, this kind of looks like a circle then, but the main difference is that I am subtracting. So I now have x minus 9 squared over 64 minus y minus 6 squared over 64 equals 1. Let's see if we can identify some things here. Um, and I'm just going to draw a little picture over to the right. I'm at 9, 6 is my center. My vertices, um, my branches are going to be opening on the x-axis. So I'm going to go 8 to the left to get to negative 2, and 8 to the right, which gets me to 17. And I'm going to go 8 up, which gets me to 14, and I'm going to go 8 down, which gets me to negative 2 as well. Okay, so here is the rectangle. Don't forget I'm creating a rectangle out of my vertices. Okay, and my asymptotes are going to go through the center. Okay, so what I want to know is the length of the transverse the length of the conjugate axis they're both going to be 16, you agree? Okay, but now I want to know my asymptotes. And again, I'm going to put them in point slope, and I'm going to use the center. So y minus the y equals m times x minus the x. My slope is going to be rise 8, run 8, or rise 8, um, run backwards 8. So this is just going to be plus or minus. I could put the 1 in there, but I don't need a 1 put in there for slope. So now let's practice writing an equation. And you're given this information, so what I'd like you to do is pause after you write down the information and see how far you can get. Okay, so I've placed on here the information given, and I know that my vertices are on the x-axis, which means my branches must open left and right, which tells me the equation I'm using is x minus whatever the x center is squared over minus y minus whatever the y is squared over equals 1. And since my center is where my asymptotes meet, or halfway between my vertices, I know that the center is 6, 0. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the center in at 6, 0. Now, this distance from here to here is half the transverse axis. That number would be 7, 
and 7 squared will give me the answer under here, which would be 49. Now where is the other ant where is the other where is the b where is this number right here So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the rectangle And remember the rectangle connects the sides which go through the vertices with the tops and since I intersect right here with an asymptote, that has to be where the bottom of this rectangle goes through. Oops. So from here to here, this distance, this is half of the conjugate, which is 7 as well. 7 squared is 49, so that would be the equation of my circle, of my hyperbola. So I can end by making this x minus 6 squared over 49 minus, I can just change that to y squared over 49 equals 1.